In this video we're going to talk about method injection technique but before that let us try to understand the following scenario. Let's say that you have a couple of beans. One is scoped to single ton and the other is the prototype bean and let us assume that the single ton bean is dependent on prototype bean which is just having a constructor just to keep things simple and then inside this class we also have one method get new server and every time we call this method from our code I'm expecting a new instance of server to be returned. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to use the constructor injection to inject an instance of this bean into this and that's what we're trying to do in our config file. But as we observe from our learnings of Spring Bean lifecycle, all the dependencies would be resolved during the instantiation phase and before the objects are made available for us to use in our application logic. And for that reason, Spring is actually going to create a new instance of prototype bean and is going to inject it into this server config. Pretty well and good. But that's about it. It's not going to inject every time you need it. In our main class code, I'm just simply trying to call this method of singleton bean and I'm trying to print the hash code and I'm doing it three times. What I'm expecting here is that the hash code would be different. That means I'm expecting a new instance every time I need it because the object that I'm requesting is of type server which is a prototype bean. So ideally every time I request for it I'm supposed to get a brand new instance but unfortunately because of the way the spring bean lifecycle works this is not possible and let me run the program and that would be more evident and here it is. So alternatively I can just simply keep things simple get rid of the constructor injection altogether and thereby we're just going to simply introduce a new keyword and return the server object every time we call this method. Now this is going to work but as you might have guessed this is of course a bad practice because this class would now be tightly coupled to this class. We don't want that. So alternatively we can also perform the dependency lookup by implementing application context ever interface. I think I got the name wrong. Applica context aware and then you're going to use this object to perform a dependency lookup of the server bean every time we call this method but obviously as I had already mentioned in one of my previous videos that may make our class tightly couple with the spring framework and we should try to avoid it as much as possible so alternatively spring will provide us another functionality and that is called method injection or lookup method injection technique to be more specific. So let's see how it's done. So all you have to do is you're going to make this method abstract and when you make that method as abstract you don't have any implementation and when you have at least one method as abstract you must make the class as abstract as well. I'm going to use this keyword here as well. And from our config file, I'm going to introduce a new tag called lookup method. And I'm going to specify that method name with this name attribute. and also the bean and I'm going to refer to this bean in here. 
Well, this might look a little tricky. But what's actually going to happen is, well, Spring is actually going to create an implementation for this method. And that implementation would just simply return an instance of whatever the bean that you specify in here. It's as simple as that. And that would happen when you call a method with this name that belong to this bean. So guess what? That's all there is to it. And if you run the program, you would see the hash code is different, which means every time we call this method, we're going to get a brand new instance of server. And same thing can be accomplished with the Java config as well. And here is the code. Let's run the program and it works as well. But here is how you would deal with it in Java config. You just simply try to return an instance of server config and since it has an abstract method, you have to override the behavior of that method and you just simply return the server object. It's as simple as that. Now with Java config, things would look more obvious than with the XML config. Here we're just simply calling this method which internally just simply returns the server object. And every time you call this method, I mean this method, the call would go to its implementation and implementation would just simply call this method to return this object. And here is one more reason why you want to use Java config over the XML config. Alright, I guess that's about it. I'll see you soon.